Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to another warm morning, and I hope everyone is keeping cool and hydrated. Uh, my name is Joey Flores from AdSpark, and before I begin my talk, let me give you a little bit of context on who AdSpark is. So, AdSpark is a digital media plus agency, meaning we have digital media in our core services, but there's so much more uh, that we do to bridge the gap between the brand and the hyper-connected Filipino of the day. So thank you so much, Shopee. Salamat, Shopee, for inviting me to speak today. And thank you to all of the attendees here. I hope you'll be able to pick up some valuable information from my talk today and apply it to your respective businesses. Now, I always like to begin my presentation by posing this question. What kind of ads do you get? So think about it for a minute. If, if you've already thought about it, Please send on the chat. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see what kind of brands that you've been getting. If not brands, maybe general category. What kind of ads have you been getting recently? Anyone? Tech? Don't be shy. Food? Same? Oh, there's a lot. Training, schooling, tech. Interesting. Now, the reason why I ask this, and I love asking this question, and it's it's coming uh, coming through and through right now, every one of us gets different kinds of ads. And uh, because we all get different ads, the ads that you get can tell me a lot about you. So throughout this pandemic, I've been doing a lot of these webinars, and I always show the audience what kind of ads that I've been getting. And since it's already been a year, I've been doing this webinar gig for a year. Uh, through my previous presentations, let me show you the kind of ads that I've been getting and how it's changed over, over the past year. So this was back in May. It's a lot of food, uh, still a lot of food. And towards July, I was getting different kinds of ads. Maybe it was telling me to start working out because I've been eating too much. And towards March, I got a different set of ads. And more recently, these are the kind of ads that I've been getting. So you're probably putting two and two together. Uh, my life has changed over the past year. And uh, the ads that I've been getting are reflected uh, on the changes of my life. It's probably because of the, the searching that I've been doing, all of the things, all of the research that I've been doing online. So... Uh, I'd like to state this fact right here that the kind of ads that you get in aggregate tells a story about you, uh, what you're interested in, what is your life right now. All of the ads we get are different in some shape or form, but digital advertising today is based on technology and the data uh, that advertisers use. And it's a great reflection on how we as customers use the internet. So. It's very powerful. Many brands are using these platforms, such as Facebook, who's also a panelist here, allow you to get the right ad to the right person at the right time. Very easy now. And now this is very important more and more because, because of the pandemic, Filipinos are spending a lot of time online. This event today would normally be done in the convention center. Uh, that's one example of that. And now we're all together via Zoom. So you need to be able to take advantage of the fact that we're spending a lot of time online and you can translate that into sales and digital advertising can do just that. So key question here, what makes an ad good? Is it the one on the left? Is it the one on the right? Is it the one in the middle? So I'm sure you remember this ad uh, back a few years back. It was the Quentong Jollibee ad went viral. Now. A great ad isn't necessarily the one in the middle, you know, something that goes viral. Um, a good ad, and this is something that you should remember, drives people to do something. So a good drive drives your desired action by you, you as the advertiser. Now, maybe, uh, maybe it's to remember a product, but maybe it's for a sale. So even though this was very popular, if the one on the left does its objective by getting people to shop now and buy uh, the Nespresso capsules, it did its job. Therefore, it's a good ad. Now, what I want you to impart on my short talk today 
is to teach you the formula for effective advertising. So basically, it's this. Uh, this is the one thing that you need to remember. It's always the right person times the right ad equals effective advertising. So plain and simple, that's one way to simplify it. And for the formula, for just like any formula, the best way to solve for it is to work backwards. Do you remember your math? Uh, always start with what you want to achieve because this will guide your entire marketing journey. Now, think about it. Um, sometimes it's very hard to set a marketing objective. Even uh, big brands today struggle with their marketing objectives. To make it easier, ask yourself this question. What is my business trying to achieve? And most of the time, it's increase in sales. We all want more revenue and 90% of the time, we want to increase my sales. So how can, the next question that you ask yourself, how can marketing help, with, help me with that? Now, then you set your marketing objective. Do I want to increase awareness? Do I have a new product that I want to push? Uh, do I need a promotion on my current product to drive sales? Do I need to remind my current customers, my, my loyal customers, to purchase again uh, this new product that I have? Or do I want to just keep everything, all my brand, top of mind? Now, since you've already figured out your objective, it's time to fill out the rest of the equation. Since we're working backwards, why don't we talk about the ad itself? Now, when you talk about advertising, um, the, generally, there are three things that you need to keep in mind about the ad itself. So first is the copy. When you talk about copy, that is the text on it. Uh, next is the creative. And the creative is really just the picture there along with the words. And that's the copy. And lastly, call to action, CTA. Now, uh, what is an incomplete ad? An incomplete ad is just copy, like just a post on Facebook that is just strictly text. That, that is not a good ad. That's an incomplete ad. If you put just a picture without any copy or call to action, people won't understand what that ad is. So it's the interplay between your copy, creative, and call to action that really uh, generates a good uh, advertising, ad, a good ad post out there. So maybe to help you with this is ask yourself this question. What am I selling, which is the product? And why should I care, which is the hook? Here, it's pretty clear. So what they're selling, Nutrition Depot, uh, is they're selling whey protein powder. And why you should care about it is because if you buy it from them, you're getting a free gym bag plus a shaker. That might be important to you. And hopefully, that will lead you to click the Shop Now button. Now, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about two points there. Because most of the time, when I see ads, we're missing that call to action. Super important. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, I've seen a lot of ads without a call to action. And without a call to action, that bottom right there, you can't interact with the ad. Ideally, you should have a clickable button. What you shouldn't do is to tell your customers to dial this hotline uh, or visit your website. What you want them to do is make it easy, make it clickable. It can be on up here or at the bottom down here. The reason why is we should be able to tie the ad to the action. So nothing is more frustrating uh, for a customer out there than seeing someone, seeing a product that you like and you can't actually buy it. So you can't click a button, you can't learn more, you can't actually go to the Shop Now page. So you should really think about how, how can I drive that customer uh, to my website or to my Shopee page. So my next piece of advice is you need to tell them to do something. So Call to action is exactly that. You need to prompt them to do an action. And it should always be action-driven. Copy, as I mentioned, is super important because you need to tell them what to do. Uh, good call to actions are shop now, add to cart, learn more. Those are all effective. Now let's look at the ad right here. Uh, what's clearly stated here is that you're getting three items for the price of two, which is a good deal if you think about it. And another thing good about this ad is that we see the 11-11 sale here. 
So this sends a signal for people that this is a limited time offer prompting more people to shop now rather than later. Because if I don't do it now, maybe I might miss the 11-11 sale. Who knows? Now, now that you've understand the right elements for an ad, another thing you need to think about is who you're talking to. Who is the right person I want to speak in in order to achieve my objective? Now, as a business owner, you probably know more or less who the right customer is. But I advise you to listen to your customers, you know, listen to the right people you want to reach so you can craft that right message for them. Because the real winner um, is in this game of marketing is the one who listens to their customers the best. Uh, especially in this time of quarantine with millions of Filipinos spending their time online. If you don't listen to what they're saying online, you will fall behind. So, First and foremost, how do I listen? You start with the data that you know now. As business owners, you already have access to the best information right now. Your current customers. Talk to your loyal customers. Uh, why do they like shopping with you all the time? Who is buying Who is buying your product? What is their feedback? How are their reviews? Is there anything that you can improve? So one easy thing that you can do is run a survey. You can offer one of one of your products uh, for raffle for this for them answering like a Google form. Uh, another thing that you can also think about is who's visiting your website. That gives you a lot of information uh, to who your customers is. And this gives you a lot of information that will help you focus on how you want to attack uh, your ad. Another thing that you can do is you can look outside your customers. So, there are a lot of free research and publications out there. You can actually visit our website, adspark.ph. We, we do a lot of these free uh, reports on the Filipino consumer. And Google has that. There's a lot of articles out there, all for free. There are things that you can do that require payment. But really, uh, when you're starting up, all you need is your data and the free things out there. And you can learn a lot of things about the Filipino people and the Filipino consumers. I'll give you an example about this. How brands are utilizing right now this fact is this trend on safety advertising. So fact number one is Filipinos today, perhaps globally, are worried about their health more than any time in the past, which is the fundamental reason why brands like McDonald's and SM spend millions of pesos on safety videos because people understandably are worried about their health. This is a key influence in their messaging. After all, even though your food looks appetizing and the mall looks really great, there's a lot of deals out there. Uh, the root of the problem is customers are worried about getting sick. That versus everything out there. So let me cite McDonald's for an example. McDonald's is a well-established brand. It's a brand that we associate with the usual stuff, you know, happiness, delicious food, fries, maybe a Big Mac. But it wasn't always a question, not only a question if the food was safe. Pre-pandemic, that wasn't a question. It was a question of, is it good for my diet? That, that's really it. But in the ads that I've seen recently, this is one from last year, this free, free YouTube road, uh, you see the CEO, Kenneth Yao, talking about the safety of their stores. And we see this time and time again with uh, malls, restaurants, even theme parks, they're all about talking about safety because they were listening to the customers and they knew what the problem was. Now, since we have all of the elements together, let's put it, uh, let's put this formula together and let's see what the right mix is. So you should always make sure that you're using the right ad. So when thinking about your customer, it's always good to think about them where they are in the funnel. So marketers love talking about the funnel because it's an easy way for us and you uh, as business owners to visualize where your customers are in the purchasing journey. And adding to cart is a journey for each of us. So the first one really is awareness, uh, finding out about the product. So I get an ad that makes me aware that this product exists. This could eventually lead to interest. When I get the ad again, it makes me enticed about that product to know it more. Then this pushes me further down the line to consider uh, purchasing the product. 
maybe I'm already thinking about buying the product, I might have to negotiate my, with my wife to let me buy it. So I'm already considering it and it's a matter of price now. And lastly, uh, this is what we all want, conversion from them clicking shop now, adding to cart, and then making that purchase. So these uh, are all marketing objectives. Uh, do I want them to know about my product? That's, those are the things that you want to think about. Or do I want them to consider, of course, uh, to buy it? Or what we want, add it, add it to their cart. Now, the funnel is super important because you can use different types of ads to push people down that funnel. To help you decide uh, what's right, there are generally two kinds of ads. First would be prospecting, which is uh, where you use, these are the ads that you use to get people interested in your product. And then there's retargeting and reactivation, which is get them to buy it again or really push them to complete that purchase. So I'll give you two examples right here. Uh, prospecting, the best thing to do there is very captivating creative. For retargeting reevaluation, it's really giving them offers. So this is one great example for prospecting. So as you can see here, I'm getting a lot of way ads because I like to work out. And uh, as you can see here, this is a new product line, really good creative. You can, everything in the creative you can see here is things that people care about, like how many proteins per uh, grams per serving, what it is actually, and lastly, uh, how much it costs. On the other side, Naman, in terms of retargeting and reactivation, what you want to do is you want to give them for, for example, this watch ad might be able to push you, the customer, to purchase with the use of a promo code. So 20% offer is pretty good. And that might be the one to push them down the funnel. So fortunately, I only have 15 minutes with you today. And I'd like to impart this message. Like digital advertising is a journey. So you might be starting here, try a list. But I advise you to test and learn. So the more that you work on it, on that journey, the better off you'll be. And moving forward from one journey to the next is the objective when you're starting out. And who knows, one day when you get really good at it, uh, you can be a leader uh, in the industry, just like how Shopee is today. So I, heard, I hope you learned something again from my talk today. Uh, my name is Joey Flores, and thank you very much.